Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to share a few magical qualities of the blue skill that are often overlooked. Things that make it twice as versatile, thrice as much fun, and it will quadruple your guitar skills, which is a rough estimate but I think I'm pretty close. We keep on upping the game step by step, so make sure you stick around to the end where everything comes together. <laughs> Level 1. The blue scale is derived from the pentatonic scale, but it's turned into a hexatonic scale, where the word penta from pentatonic means five unique notes in the scale. The word hexa from hexatonic means six unique notes in the scale. So in order to turn the pentatonic scale into the blues scale, we add one note, turning it from a five note scale into a six note scale. The note we add to the scale is a blue note. You can think of this as a note deliberately played out of key or even out of tune to give us that, well, this feeling. Great, so we play the pentatonic scale like this. Open three, open two, open two, open two, open three, open three. If we want to turn this into a blue scale, we add one note and we add the flat five or the sharp four, which is over here. Open three, open. Mm, that note, lovely. Same note, so fret three on the G string and fret one on the A string, the B flat or the A sharp. Turning it into this scale, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we repeat the same notes. Sounds great and this is already super versatile by itself. As I just played you can use it over any minor chord. So if I play an E minor chord, we can use the E minor blues scale. Level 2. But as the name already suggests, it sounds great in a blues environment too. So if I just play it over an A7 chord, we can play the same scale. So now I'm playing an A minor blues scale over the A7 chord. It sounds cool. But what if we have a standard 12 bar blues in the key of A? Level 3. You can just take this blue scale and play it over the entire thing using just this hexatonic scale. So over the A7, over D7, over E7. So that's already multiple implications for just this scale. But here it comes. Level 4. Did you know there's also a major variant of the blues scale? If you didn't, make sure to subscribe to this channel. But how do we use it? Well, this one is also very versatile. First, it sounds great on any major chord. It needs an extra bit of magic. Really, just throw it on any major chord. But just like salt, be careful. Don't overuse it or it becomes a little bit too salty, maybe. <laughs> Okay, that's cool, but how do we play it? It's the same thing. It's literally the same thing. But the starting point is on the second note of that minor blues scale we learned. So when we played the minor blues scale in E, like this, if we start on the second note, the G in this case, that is the G major blues scale, which we can use on the G major chord. So. So you can give it that bluesy feel, that country feel, but also in a pop or a rock tune this will sound great. And again we're adding a blue note in there. But now it's not the sharp 4 or the flat 5, we're adding the flat 3. Which is the interval that makes a chord minor. But wait, we play it on a major chord, right? Because we use the flat 3 as a blue note, a note to spice things up a little bit, to give it that extra bit of dissonance, if used wisely it will sound immensely awesome. 
Playing notes from outside the key is a good way to put a little bit more depth and character into your playing, instead of playing these same old pentatonic licks. Level 5. Learn the skill everywhere on the neck. So it doesn't only sound great over here. the major blues skill in G. So the E minor blues and the G major blues scale are what we call a relative keys. They share the same notes, but the root note is different and that greatly determines the sound of the scale. If we play these notes over an E minor chord, it sounds like an E minor blues scale. But if we play the same exact notes over the G chord, the relative major, it sounds major and vastly different. It's pretty awesome, right? So you can very quickly find the relative major of any minor chord. So E minor, three frets up, G major. The relative key of A minor is one, uh, three frets up, one, two, three, C major. Pretty easy. The other way around, it works the same. So the relative key of C major is three frets down, one, two, three, A minor. The relative key of uh, D major is three frets down, one, two, three, B minor. That's the way it works. Super easy. But wait a minute. The coolest thing has yet to come. Level 6. Let's take a look at the first two chords of almost any blues. Let's say we play in the key of A. We've got four bars of A7, etc. And then we go to the four chord. So one, two, three, four, the D7. Just how any blues starts. But now instead of playing that minor blues scale on both, which you can and which sounds good, we're going to play the A major blues scale on the A7 and switch to the A minor blues scale on the D7. So A7, we play the A major blues. To D7. And now we play the A minor blues scale. A major blues scale. Very interesting to outline these chords this way. The A7 sounds different when we play solos than the D7. So this is super cool to do and to try out. We're basically painting the chords with the solo notes we play. A worksheet and the tabs for this video and how to combine a major and minor blues scale over just one chord as a little bonus video are available at my Patreon page. So please head over there if you wish to support this channel. I could talk about this for ages, give you tons and tons of examples and things to do, but I'm getting a lot of comments about me talking too much and I take it super personally. So let's see what happens if I just stop talking. Please subscribe. Okay, bye.